yeah, I did change, and I'm really glad I changed. This one's wife. Lawsuit. P. Diddy used Harry Access to gain sexual favours. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Prince Harry has found himself named in a lawsuit. He's not a party to the lawsuit, but he is named in it, which could have potentially serious consequences. A 73-page pleading has been filed on the 26th of February of this year in the United States Federal Court, Southern District of New York, by a gentleman called Rodney Jones. He's the plaintiff. And he's brought a civil action against Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Lucian Charles Grange, Christina Quorum, Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jane Doe's 1 to 10, and ABC Corporation's 1 to 10. Quite the dramatis personae there. Before one gets into the meat of the pleadings, it contains a trigger warning which states, This document contains highly graphic information of a sexual nature, including sexual assault. Additionally, there are graphic images of the aftermath of a shooting, redacted images of sexual intercourse, redacted images of minors, sex workers and prostitutes, details of sex trafficking and the illegal distribution of guns and drugs. Quite the warning. Reads like an A to Z of illegality. The parties are... Rodney Jones, who apparently is an American artist and music producer. He was something of a child prodigy, by all accounts. It then lists the various defendants, which includes Sean Combs, who you're familiar with. It includes Justin Dior Combs, who apparently is the son of Sean Combs and Misa Hilton. He's a producer and actor, and he's appeared on television shows. Lucian Grange, who is the CEO of Universal Music Group. Ethiopia Habtamariam is the former CEO of Motown Records. Christina Corum is the chief of staff to Sean Combs. Chalice Recording Studios is a recording studio in Los Angeles. Motown Records is a record label. Universal Music Group is a record label. Ditto Love Records. Comb Enterprises is a diverse portfolio of business and investments that include music, fashion, fragrance, beverage, marketing, film, television and media properties. It would appear that there was a relationship, a business relationship, a musical relationship that took place. I'll read to you now the summary of events that the pleadings provides. From September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' Love album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht, rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones's cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana and mushrooms. 
the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms, Mr. Combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands and Florida. Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corum, instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Young Miami's cousin and or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. An unnamed rapper, well, the name re uh, redacted, on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with underage girls, sex workers and an R&B singer, name redacted, in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home consorting with underage girls and sex workers. There's also reference to a shooting taking place at Chalice Recording Studios. Accordingly, there is substantial allegations of a particularly unsavoury nature levelled against P. Diddy and various people in his universe. I've analysed Sean Combs separately, and you might want to watch the series about him. In case you want to watch that, you may want to just pause before I go on to mention the findings of that. My analysis of Sean Combs found that he is a narcissist, and therefore... If these allegations, and it's important to point out these simply remain allegations at the current time, if these allegations are proven, they certainly would not be out of place within the behaviour of a particular type of narcissist. Given the fact that there are various photographs contained within the pleadings which are taken presumably from the photographs and footage on Mr Jones's phone, it would appear that he seems pretty confident that he's got evidence of the various wrongdoing. Naturally, we only have his side of the story, and, of course, many of the allegations may need to be placed in a particular context. I'm not stating this to make excuses for P. Diddy. I don't know the man. I've no need to or motivation to defend him. But I'm simply, as always, pointing out that we need to consider the actual evidence. Allegations have been put forward with some evidence in the context of these pleadings, and it does look pretty damning. Nevertheless, one would have to hear the other side of the story also to make an evaluation about the veracity of this documentation and allegations. There's a lot of detail that's contained, naturally. I'm not going to take you through it all, as this would result in this video being hours long. But there's various allegations concerning a shooting that took place, and there's pictures showing a bloody bathroom, blood over a toilet. There's allegations of P. Diddy sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones, providing detail of those events. Allegations of Mr. Combs attempting to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex. Allegations of drug use. Allegations that Mr. Jones was sexually assaulted by young Miami's cousin. Pictures taken of interactions in that regard. Allegations of the trafficking of minors. And indeed, at one point, there's reference to sex workers being involved and that there's the use of drugs and sex workers, more photographs that are provided Allegations that Mr. Combs attempted to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. on a yacht. And essentially, allegations of threatening Mr. Jones and intimidating Mr. Jones with P. Diddy using his power and influence to do the same. And it then involves the suggestion that the various record labels and their moguls all profited off the unlawful behaviour of Sean Combs. It also suggests, in effect, that his chief of staff, Christina Corum, was the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs' Jeffrey Epstein, which is quite a 
serious allegation to allege to draw parallels between Sean Combs and Jeffrey Epstein. Naturally, this evidence will at some point be tried and a determination will be made by a jury as to whether they believe that the allegations have been proven or not. The allegations contained would provide many videos worth of analysis in itself with regard to the behaviour of one or more narcissists. But this, of course, has been brought to your attention with regard to the relevance to Prince Harry and this one's wife. Now, at paragraph 317, the pleading states, The reason that defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records and Universal Music Group ignored the numerous red flags about Mr Combs was to receive financial benefits from Mr Combs and his sex trafficking venture. Defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records and Universal Music Group knew that it would gain far from routine financial benefits by ignoring the red flags associated with Mr. Combs and by participating in his sex trafficking venture. Thus, they looked the other way because they were going to gain by participating in and allowing his sex trafficking venture to go ahead. There then follows a variety of allegations with lettered paragraphs and then eventually we get on to paragraph Q. Among the financial benefits that the defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records and Universal Music Group received for participating in and facilitating Combs' sex trafficking venture were the affiliation and access to Mr Combs' popularity. Thus, the allegation is Allow him to run his sex trafficking venture and then you'll benefit because he's connected and popular. The pleading continues. Mr Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr Combs' sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. Thus, Harry gets mentioned in the context of suggesting that somehow Sean Combs could get you access to him because he was Mr. Popular or Mr. Connected. This is very interesting. Now, bear in mind that this is a pleading and it contains allegations, so it may not actually be accurate, and we'll have to see if the evidence would bear that out. Does it mean, that, for instance, they're referencing British royals generally and Prince Harry gets mentioned just because he's a British royal, so he's mentioned by way of an example rather than it being specifically access to him? I suppose that's a possibility, but it does seem rather unusual to name him specifically. And therefore, it suggests that quite possibly, if this information is accurate, that somehow Sean Combs was able to facilitate access to Prince Harry alongside these famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians and international dignitaries. Interestingly, in this section of the pleading, no famous athletes are mentioned by name, nor political figures, nor artists, musicians. And yet Prince Harry is mentioned by name. Is it the case that Mr. Johnson has, or I beg your pardon, Mr. Jones has specific information appertaining to Prince Harry? Now, might it be the case that Mr. Combs made a wild boast saying, do what I want and I'll get you access to these people, even though he couldn't do so? Again, that's a possibility. So you might have a situation whereby Mr. Jones is wrong in his allegations or he's correct 
and Mr. Combs has said this, but it was simply a wild boast by a narcissist, or that there is actual substance in this, that he could gain people access to all of these categories of individuals and Prince Harry. If that is correct, how is it that he's able to gain access so readily to Prince Harry? Is it because Prince Harry has made it clear that he's a big fan of P. P. Diddy's music and therefore was quite content for P. Diddy to allow him to have arrangements so that people could meet him? Maybe. Is it the case that there is something altogether seedier about this? Has Harry attended events organised by Sean Combs? Does Harry know about what Sean Combs has been doing? This, of course, is speculation. But it is appropriate speculation based upon an allegation that is contained within legal pleadings. This isn't something that's just floating in the ether. A man who states that he has got photographic and film footage of drug taking and sex trafficking, etc. And in the pleading, there are lots of photographs that are provided which appear to support the allegations. Also suggests that there was some form of arrangement whereby Sean Combs was able to state that he could cause access for people to Prince Harry because of the parties that he would throw. Has Harry been at some of these parties? that Sean Combs has thrown. Many questions arise from all of this to address why is Prince Harry named specifically when nobody else is mentioned specifically in the context of these groupings of famous athletes, political figures, etc. Why is it that Prince Harry and Prince Harry alone is specifically named? What was his involvement? Why was Prince Harry in agreement, as suggested, that you could gain access to him through Sean Combs? Did Sean Combs have something on Harry? Was Harry beholden to him in some way? We've yet to find out. But this is potentially very dangerous information which could impact heavily upon Harry's reputation. As we know, Prince Andrew has had to withdraw from public life and has kept his head down as a consequence of the allegations of Virginia Giuffre linked to the Epstein scandal. Could it be that an analogous scenario involving Sean Combs drags in Prince Harry also? If that is the case... That could hasten his disengagement from this one's wife, as if there was any form of implication. That would mean that various institutions and organisations that might have an involvement with Harry would want to distance themselves from any whiff of scandal, particularly charities and philanthropic outings. This would then also impact upon this one's wife as she has attempted to rehabilitate herself, trying to create this image that she and Harry are royals for hire once again. Now, it's important to put it in context that these are just allegations contained in a legal pleading, and not to get too excited about it. But it is interesting that Prince Harry has been specifically named, and therefore it leads to legitimate questioning as to why is he mentioned as someone that Sean Combs can have access to? Why him specifically? What's the relationship between Harry and Sean Combs, so that Sean Combs can say to people, I can get you access to him. It's quite clear that these are very serious allegations against Sean Combs, and he has been involved in controversies previously. And of course, as I've explained to you, as the fact that he's a narcissist means that there is a greater likelihood that he would engage in these behaviours. Naturally, they need to be tried in a court of law where a jury evaluates the evidence before a judgment is provided or a verdict is provided. Nevertheless, Harry is mentioned in those pleadings 
and it raises the question of what's the relationship between him and Sean Combs? How is it that Sean Combs can say that he has access to Prince Harry? What does he have on Prince Harry? Why are the two connected? And given the allegations of Sean Combs's behaviour, is it the case that somehow Harry has got caught up in all of this world? The fact is that Sean Combs appears to be utilising access to Harry as a means to undertake his sex trafficking parties. That association is certainly not a good look for Prince Harry. Whether it's true or not, the allegation in itself starts to raise many questions. And this could well have a knock-on effect in relation to Prince Harry. It's important also to point out there is no evidence that Harry has attended any of these parties that have been referenced. There's no suggestion that Harry's been involved in any wrongdoing. But the fact that he's named specifically in relation to an individual who is accused of a variety of different wrongdoings does raise legitimate questions that ought to be answered and raises the possibility that there is something rather dark and unsettling that might be revealed, be it in terms of Harry's behaviour or a simple connection between the two, which could then have significant repercussions with regards to what evidence is unearthed, what comes out of the proceedings themselves, and the impact upon the reputation of Harry and, by extension, this one's wife. Could it be the case that Harry, or should it be the case that Harry, has any form of implication in this sordid setup? It's likely that this one's wife will be looking to jettison him as a matter of urgency to avoid being tainted by association. Quite where it all leads to, we shall have to wait and see. But it is interesting to see that the conduct of another narcissist may well impact upon Prince Harry, who will then find himself being jettisoned by this one's wife. What do you think about this development of Harry being mentioned in these legal proceedings brought by an individual against Sean Combs and others? Do you think there's any substance in it? Do you think perhaps this is just the workings of a fantasist? Do you think there's more to it than meets the eye? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.